Welcome. We are here today to talk about past and future Chicago Open Archives participants. My name is Danielle Nowak. I'm the Access Services Librarian at the Sterling Morton Library and a member of the Chicago Open Archives Planning Committee. Today we are here with Julie Lynch. She is the librarian from the Northside Neighborhood History Collection. And we're here to, t to talk about the Chicago Open Archives and different things about Julie's collection. So thank you, Julie, for being here with us today. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Starting off, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and the Northside Neighborhood History Collection? Sure. I'm a librarian at Solzer Regional Library, where the Northside Neighborhood History Collection is housed. It's actually a collection comprised of many different Northside neighborhoods that got started in the Chicago Public Library branches. They were brought to Solzer under a grant so that they could all be housed in acid-free folders in a climate-controlled environment. One of the strongest collections is one that we'll be featuring in this year's Chicago Open Archives. It's the Ravenswood Lakeview Community Collection, and that got started by the Ravenswood Lakeview Historical Association, who is our partner in this initiative. The collection got started in the 1930s by a librarian named Helen Zatterberg, and she just started asking local residents what they remembered about growing up in Ravenswood. So we have old photographs and stories from residents remembering times in the 1880s, 1890s, pictures of them in front of their houses, street scenes, local businesses. So it really captures a nice everyday feel of what life was like on the north side uh, so long ago. Generally speaking, who is a typical patron? Yeah, so um, the great thing about being an archive in a public library is that we really serve everybody. We help Boy Scouts who are doing collection badges. They'll come in and look at uh, what an archival collection is. We had a, I had a, some old photographs and recent photographs of the neighborhood. And there was one from Wells Park from 2002. They had just built a gazebo in the park. And the young fellow said, wow, that's really old. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's all relative, depending on the, the age of the person looking at the historic item. But then we have people doing research for advanced degrees, for master's degrees or history degrees from the local universities. We help people who are doing family history, so their, their family might have grew up in the community and they're coming back to do some research. People who are researching the history of their house, they might have just moved into the neighborhood and they're trying to get a better sense of you know, how long the house has been in the neighborhood and who's lived there, as well as school projects. Kids write about the history of their community. And we also love working with schools and students who are doing history fair projects. That's always a very fun time for us to connect students with local history. Awesome. And in regards to Chicago Open Archives, what is your experience like? Well, last year was the first year we participated, and it was wonderful. We had a fantastic turnout. I think around f between 40 and 50 people showed up, and we co-hosted it with the local historical society, the Ravenswood Lakeview Historical Association. So they have an open house in the auditorium, and then um, we have some things on display in the historical room, which is located on the mezzanine. So we invite everyone to come out and just we have like a little show and tell things on display for them to look at. Okay, and how do you feel like the Chicago Open Archives event impacted your your archive? Well, it's it's it certainly gave us greater visibility and connectedness to the community. The archive is located up on the mezzanine, and so there's not always a, it's not in a prominent position where people walk by it every day. So it was great to to have people come out and say, oh, I didn't know this was here. And then people uh, can contact the Ravenswood Lakeview Historical Association for if they want to have things that they'd like to donate. In fact, we had a man bring in an old shoe brush from a local business. <laughs> so it was even acted as a, a, a point of donation for us. So that was fun, too. And are you going to participate this year? Of course, yeah. We're delighted that you're having this again because it was such a wonderful time for us last year. And so we're really excited. Our event is on that first Saturday of October, so we're looking forward to it. Are there any exciting teasers that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, so since this year we're celebrating the bicentennial of Illinois history, we just wanted to highlight a few things that have been noted by the theme. And one of them was the diary from 1914, a young girl named Elsie Dobble who lived in Lakeview. And as you know, in 1914, on uh, April 23rd, she has an entry talking about going to the opening day for the, what we call now Wrigley Field. And I can share a little bit from that. Yeah, please okay. do. So she writes, 
April 23rd, 1914. Today was the opening of the Federal League ballpark. Ma, Owen, and I went to see it, but we didn't go in. I never saw such crowds in all my life. Before the game, they shot some kind of things into the air, and a little parachute came out of them. They had two bands there which kept playing This Is The Life, a very appropriate song for the occasion. The shy feds won. There was an awful cute pennant guy there who kept fancying us. We bought a pennant for a quarter. We certainly had a fine time, but I was wishing I could have gone in. The score was 9-2. to two. Wow, that is incredible. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Sure. What advice do you have to any potential participants? I, I think if you can partner with another organization, it helps in the planning, and they can invite members of their organization to increase great turnout. And it's just really exciting to see people who come to the Open Archives connect with Chicago history and to, to bring the manuscripts, the pictures, the maps to a new audience and connect them to people living in Chicago now. I really look forward to your event, and thank you for being here with us. Today. Thanks, thanks. It, thanks for hosting this. It's a great initiative, and I encourage everyone to come out and to this open house and to the others that you're hosting as well. All right, thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the Chicago Area Archivist COA podcast. We would like to thank Chicago Area Archivists, Chicago Open Archives Planning Committee, Engineer Allison Shine Holmes, and WFMT for their time and effort.